Welcome back to Switch Corner. Today we're going to be taking a look at Fuser on the Nintendo Switch. This one is the latest rhythm experience coming from the Mighty Harmonix. Here though they're scrapping the plastic guitars, the plastic instruments for something much more contained. In fact you only use the Joy-Con or Pro Controller itself and then they're going to stick you in front of like decks and wish you good luck. But how does it work and does it capture the magic of their past efforts? So think like Guitar Hero, think Rock Band. Well hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family and let's get started. So Fuser and we're jumping straight in with gameplay and it's sticking you in front of four different turntables while attaching an instrument to each. The far left blue for example is always that drum line, where the far right that is vocals. The middle two some sort of instrumentation whether that is like a guitar line to violin to maybe something digital. This is not predefined by the turntables themselves but by the track you select. For example the weekend's featured track it's a piano line. Rage Against the Machine however think guitars. You combine these elements to create something wholly unique while having the option to, should you prefer, use multiple tracks from the same line. So you could have let's say two drum sets at once. I found myself struggling for example to pull away from the mighty dead mouse and then layering that with another drum kit. Now like any rhythm game a big part of your decision on whether to you know pick this one up will no doubt come down to your taste in music and with that in mind I've actually put a link to the entire 100 track playlist in the description down below. They do however do a good job of crossing eras and genres. The majority they're made up of like pop, dance, rap, R&B, metal and Latin. Do not come here expecting you know the more obscure or heavy side of things. It's all a little bit more on the obvious side which makes complete sense given the aim to attract you know a wide audience. With that though I will say I was a little disappointed to see a lack of heavier genres so think like techno trap. Even things like house is not really represented here. No doubt though that is a potential option in the future for DLC. Overall though there's a ton of mechanics here to cover so I'm going to just talk about like a few of the options to give you a sense of what to expect as it's a whole lot more involved than you may think going in. First the four tracks you'll be playing at any given time will be rated in two ways your ability to drop them on a downbeat and how the crowd is reacting to that mix. It's not only finding a good balance that audibly doesn't make your head want to explode but to have that next idea lined up when you know the crowd starts to like you know get a little bit cold to what you're doing. You'll see though what can be like considered a health bar just actually above my head in this video in fact let this get to zero and it's just like yeah game over the crowd hates you and in the nicest possible way you absolutely suck. As you progress though not only will you be leveling up your character and earning tokens to unlock new tracks and cosmetics but a ton more mechanics are going to come into play. Expect here to have the option to line up the next track maybe you want to add a specific sound effect to a track like let's say reverb. How about overriding the decks as I said adding two drum lines. This is all then before the crowd even gets involved they'll be shouting out suggestions whether that's a specific track or simply an instrument type or genre. This was by far the most interesting part of the gameplay for me because it becomes not only about making you know a good mix but learning what tracks you have at your disposal and where they are like placed in your repertoire. Your song selection at the top of the screen it will start you know relatively small but before you know it you'll have multiple menus to navigate using the left and right trigger and you need to memorize where these specific records are so when they're requested you can jump straight to them. The whole game is basically controlled with a cursor on screen and I gotta say here it works really well because in these moments when an audience member was requesting a track if there was a mistake if there was a problem that was always my fault not the games. From here though just expect your list of responsibilities to like grow as you try to entertain more and more demanding crowds whether that's adding effects lining tracks up choosing specific songs changing the tempo changing the key from minor to major and vice versa choosing the key the records even playing in or simply hitting all the required expectations before the timer that's actually going to be behind me in the video so actually take a look here but yeah once that timer goes down to zero you need to make sure you complete that checklist below don't do that you're going to lose a hell of a lot of health it even has like synthesized instruments you can jump on as well they are simple key press but it's still another thing for you to worry about this is as much about understanding what you have at your disposal as making sure you're on that next beat miss a beat expect to lose some health hit it and congrats it's going to be going up same thing with literally everything else you do every button click is going to cost you something or earn you something at first with this one honestly i wasn't really sure but within just a couple of minutes of gameplay and making my first awful mix 
I was hooked. I wasn't only impressed with how they got it all to work, but how much is actually going on here. And that's before I even touched the online portion of the gameplay. Single player, it somewhat has a story. You're basically just increasing your popularity by moving up the ranks at this 24 seven festival. Along the way, you're gonna meet a few like characters who are relatively weak, honestly, but they, they do their job. You know, they make you at least feel like you're becoming more important. What I quickly realized though, towards the pretty lengthy like single player was, this is really just a tutorial, a lesson on what is to come online. And that's because online you're obviously going to face like stiffer competition. There's a whole host of online options as well. Before we do go on though, and I show this footage, there is a character creator in the game as well. While it's not hugely in depth, you can get as weird as you want. And yeah, while I was doing my best like Marla impression over here, you know, keeping things classy, my friend Star Wars Shovelware went all out in what appears to be like Bob Ross's paint set exploded. That all said, we made some horrendous mixes together and you can choose to either work in co-op or actually face off against each other. They're like 60 seconds just to battle it out. Who can put up the best set and win this crowd's affection? These battles, a lot of fun, not only in the sense of trying to win, but just hearing what creations and sometimes abominations your friends or those online can put out there. You'll quickly though start to hear these misbeats, those slip ups, and you can't help but feel the pressure knowing you just need to keep things relatively tidy and you're gonna be on your way to winning. The most interesting piece then as well though, those online can simply watch if they want to. They can become the audience and throw requests your way or even actually upvote or downvote your set. Really curious to see where this goes on launches. Naturally, I was playing with like a limited pre-release group, but I could see audiences here just being absolutely huge. And that's gonna like add a whole new layer of pressure. Outside of this, then you can even expect some social events. Not sure what they're gonna be yet, they weren't live for this review. But one thing that was live, you can share a set with the world and they can kind of like give you an opinion on it. That was really interesting to dive in and see what people were doing. This is incredibly unique though, and it just shows harmonic's ability in a genre to capture an intensity and skill you just wouldn't expect. It's very much something that feels like it should be simple but they have a ton of tricks up their sleeve to keep you coming back. Especially the one thing that's kind of got me hooked right now, I'm going back to try and five star rate each of the single player like levels. Problems wise, not really many, honestly. I mean, the track list, it's not gonna be for everyone. And until we see more DLC, that's gonna be a roadblock for some out there. Then though, I will say there's also a very slight stutter. This is when a section typically ends before loading up like your next checklist of requirements. That list is constantly changing. Very, very rarely, when it did change, I did face a very slight freeze and the game wouldn't register my input if I was trying to, you know, like drop a new focal line. Overall though, like gameplay wise, this is really good stuff. And I think Riven fans, you should be impressed in those freezes, very, very minor and very, very infrequent. Graphically speaking, then it's good enough. This is clearly Tomorrowland influenced. If you gave someone like under 18 a crayon and said, do your best at what you think a festival would be like. Understandably though, I gotta say, it's just, this is the festival where, you know, everyone is high on life and not high on booze and everything else that comes along with a festival. I like the colors though, they pop, the stages are entertaining in their design and it adds for a little variety along like your, you know, career path. Character design then is decent though. The animations, they don't always match up with the BPM of the moment of the record, which I found a little annoying. And if I had one other request on the side of that, the camera is constantly in that broadcast like TV style. Like I'm looking at the DJ, I think having the option for a simplistic first person viewpoint would have been exciting. So you could look out over the crowd and feel the moment and energy. Overall though, it comes off as kind of like a kid friendly festival, which makes absolute sense, but it does do a good job on the scale scale of things. So all you then and outside of the crowd noises and the fully voice acted characters are decent enough. It's really the track list, giving us a good breakdown of each from the instrument selection. Gotta say I'm impressed for the most part with the variety and hopefully they now can get a little bit more creative when it comes to DLC. I don't want more of this, I want more genres. I want house, I want techno, I want trap. Overall though, like audio wise, it's impressive how they've got it all to work by simply matching the beats per minute at first. When you first get into the game, tracks might sound a bit weird because they're going too slow or going too fast. But once you get things going and you learn the ropes, the flexibility, it is impressive. As always though, with harmonics, look, they're relying on the music, but the way they like mold it and 
change it around what they want to achieve is always impressive. Here though, unless you have a solid speaker system, I'd absolutely whack your headphones on. Overall, there's a lot to like here. Not only does it like capture the sense of intensity that rhythm games often do, but I think people would be impressed with actually how much you can control in those moments where, you know, you fade in the likes of Dead Mouse and you hear the crowd cheer, you for sure get that sense of achievement that few rhythm games can match. The loop is just addictive generally and it's worthy of standing next to Harmonic's best work. Like any rhythm game though, check out that track list, make sure you like some of it, not all of it, but a few tracks. And if you do like a few tracks, you should be good because you'll only be choosing very small snippets of each. Then do expect that very slight frame freeze on sections loading in that may occasionally harm your mix. That said though, like the final thing, it is priced high, no doubt because of the music they licensed, but I do think you're gonna get hours of entertainment out of this and I think they can justify it. Just, I will say, expect a whole lot of DLC to follow this, including actually a VIP edition which is a hundred bucks here in the US, so a $40 extra increased price tag. Rhythm games are rarely cheap, so I don't think this will like, come as too much of a surprise. Today, I'm gonna to be giving Fuser a great eight out of 10, and it's good to see Harmonix doing their thing on the Switch. Cannot wait to see where they take this next, and I can't wait to see the online community just absolutely explode over this like coming few days. Thanks to two factors, really. It has crossplay, and it even has local like vice chat support on switch no app required thanks for watching will you be adding this one to your collection or will you be skipping over it remember to check out then the full 100 tracks in the video description down below i put a link that goes directly to the fuser website so you can at least get an idea before you start like throwing the cash about with that then like a shout out to the patrons of the channel who are just going above and beyond to support switch corner helps more than you know so thank you all so much if you do want to check that out for yourself i have linked it in the video description down below then hit subscribe if you love the switch as much as we all do here join our growing family and i'll see you all on the next video thanks everyone <laughs>